don't lose hope yet. Still early days, but be cautious and be ready for a Conservative government and what that might mean for us. Sherry DeNovo is one of Canada's most effective advocates for LGBT rights. Claim the Trans Day of Remembrance. As an opposition member of Ontario's legislature, she pushed through bills that banned conversion therapy, added protections for trans and non-binary people, and helped queer and trans couples get officially recognized as parents. She left politics ahead of a heated provincial election and returned to her former life as a United Church minister. How has it been the last few months kind of transitioning back into the Christian life? Have you been saving many souls? <laughs> Have any of your colleagues from Queen's Park been coming by? It's not, not you know, high-level high folk, but yeah, <laughs> others, yes. This is the best job I've ever had, and it was before politics, and I sort of say to my congregation, it's kind of like being a chaplain in a war zone going into politics. There's only so many tours of duty you can do, and then you have to come home. And I did my tours of duty. I did 11 years' time to come home. You know, because in politics, it's all, it's all about the future, usually. It's about not the now. Like, we want to achieve things, and sometimes we do, but never as much as we can. Whereas in faith groups, you can actually model that kind of community right away. You can actually provide family, which is, I think, so important in the LGBTQ2S community, family where there isn't family necessarily, a family of choice. That's what these places can be. And that's so important because we desperately need that in our communities. I mean, that's what, you know, when you look at the serial killers, that's what so many of those young men did not have. It's a place that could be open, a place where they were had community, a place, somebody who would notice and keep bugging the cops to do something. We do that here, and I think, and I think inclusive faith communities of all faiths do that too. We need more of them. We need a lot more of them. So, like you said, there's always been homophobia and transphobia mm -hmm. as a part of our politics in Ontario, but it does seem to be hitting this new kind of tenor that that you're talking about. I mean, there's been speculation that this ha some of this at least has to do with the fact that we have a lesbian premier um, for the first time from kind of watching it all unfold, it seems a little bit hard to unpack those two things, this rise of an even more virulent form of social conservatism and a premier who's part of the LGBT community. You know, when you were in Queen's Park, did you feel that shift? Actually, I thought, quite frankly, um, you know, having worked with Kathleen when she was a cabinet minister before she ran for the leadership, um, you know, and I phoned her actually the day after she won the leadership and I said, congratulations on kicking some homophobic butt because that was very much part of the campaigns against her within the Liberal Party. Um, I thought it would play out more dramatically than it did in the subsequent elections of her. I thought there'd be more homophobia. I was amazed and I thought, quite frankly, well, we're moving on, we've turned a page. but. The way that the Conservative Party is shifting is much more concerning. And the issues that they were talking about, like sex ed. Sex ed, by the way, is absolutely code for homo and transphobia. You know, the raising of that issue is, is a real problem. It's a problem for our community. It's a problem, I think, for everyone who's progressive in Ontario. And the rise of right-wing media in this province is a real cause for concern. So, so all of a sudden, does Kathleen Wynne's sexuality you know, mean something? Maybe, uh, maybe, but it's part of a larger and I think very scary shift. How worried should we be with a, a, a potential for government? Well, I think it's good news and bad news. Uh, I was, uh, you know, went through four elections at Queen's Park. I think in every single one of them, the Tories were slated to win a majority. The other thing is, even if it happens, so I'm going to be glass half full for a minute, even if it happens, there are absolutely people in that caucus and there will be people in that cabinet that can listen to reason. Uh, I think more concerning is who informs the Tories, if you will the sort of consciousness raising and education that happens more at a grassroots level. Um, that's where people learn um, what their attitudes are going to be when they grow up. I'm very concerned about the Christian right, and it's that's close to home, and that's something I rail about a lot on my show, The Radical Reverend. Um, but, I mean, I think, again, for mainstream denominations in the Christian uh, Ontario, it's time we showed our colors, and by that I mean our pride colors. It's time we spoke up, and not just in Christianity, in Islam, in Judaism, in Hinduism, in Sikhism, I, 
everyone needs who's queer positive to stand up and say so and talk about how that is part of their faith tradition. What's the work to be done that's left on at a legislative level? Obviously, there, there are things yes. that, that were left undone. Yes. You know, we need a lot more done on HIV issues. It's still criminalized. You know, um, we need work on that. The blood ban, please. And, ag and again, I think enforcement, some of the enforcement that's so important that has to be done is, for example, around trans rights. You know, Toby's law passed in 2012. I still get calls. I still hear about instances where trans people are not hired. Up front, people say, I'm not hiring you because of what you look like, how you dress. Um, they still can't get adequate health care. They can't get gender reassignment surgery. That should be covered by OHIP everything to do with moving on into their new and truer self should be covered. If it's not, that falls under Toby's law and in the Ontario Human Rights Code. And we see, you know, with the serial killing, we still have work to do with our police forces around equal rights. You know, do queers really have equal rights under the law? I don't think so, not yet, even though it says so on paper. You were involved in some of the earliest LGBT rights protests in Canada, 1971, you know, the We Demand at Parliament Hill. But it feels like, at least in Toronto, we're hitting a point where, where people are making those demands again. You know, how should we think about this moment? What, what do you make of it in the context of everything that's come before? Well, I tweeted out when Pride made their move to ban, be very clear, not police, police in uniform from marching in pride. And I said, I'm proud of pride. The intersectionality uh, that I think people in the community are finally, and people who <laughs> are in government, finally have being forced to deal with is really important. And I say, this is an old white feminist, you know, from the day. Um, so that's a very positive movement. And I think we have to, um, and we have to acknowledge that. I also think there's um, work to be done within our community still around transphobia. You know, you always have to be vigilant about these things. Trust me, whoever wins, what, you know, if it's the Liberals, if it's the NDP, or if it's the Conservatives, I will be there in their offices advocating, and it will probably be advocating for some changes. There's no doubt about it. Jared, thanks so much. You're very welcome.